Have you ever been around a player, but let's talk to you, Heath, about your professional experience around somebody who just, even if they're not playing, they somehow make it all about them, right? Mm -hmm. and, and obviously when they are playing, it's still all about them. And how you think this is just, we can even get into the CR7 legacy a little bit, but as yeah. a player, obviously he's got uh, some off the field stuff, but let, let's, let's, what, what do you think about this behavior it's, it's, and his reaction to it? It's funny because obviously he is one of the five greatest players to ever play the game, right? Uh, and his numbers speak for themselves, but you're getting to a point now where you have been the player where a team is built around you. And now you have a project where the team needs to be built around the team and you have good players and we haven't been getting the most out of those players. If I'm, if I'm the board or whatever, and the money that we've spent at the club. Ronaldo comes in for whatever reason they decided that. Obviously, I think it was to prevent him from going to Manchester City uh, and becomes the focal point. Now he's at an age where he's not the player that he once was. He's much more efficient, still has the ability to do unbelievable world-class things. But there is that tipping point of needing to play that role. Now, I will never understand what it's like to be Cristiano Ronaldo. I'll never know what it's like to, to spend a day in, in, in his shoes. But he is nearing the end of his best uh, – days and again when they go down the Ronaldo Messi comparisons Ronaldo has become much more efficient but with Ronaldo being more much more efficient it's required him to be put in the position to be more efficient right where you look at another player who's better like a Messi who can be on the ball and be more effective in and around the ball all the time whereas Ronaldo you want Ronaldo in and around the goal right and if he's not providing in the way that they want as a team or the way the team wants to build out because we're seeing the modern game no one you're, you're almost no teams and I say that with excuse to Messi because he doesn't defend are allowed to go without players that right, defend, right? right? Everybody has to defend now in the modern game, or at least if you want to set up in a way that gets you the ball in good spots on the field, that means you don't have to break down 11 players to score. Those types of things are really, really important. Now uh, to move on to whether or not I've had, had teammates like that. Yeah, of course I have, you know, I had, I had, I played with, uh, Thierry Henry and Thierry Henry wasn't whether he played or not. <laughs> he gave he was, us he names, was, everybody. He gave us names he, and one of the biggest he, to play. <laughs> he was he was a guy that would have absolute meltdowns. Like he would have he would leave training. He would go home. He would like leave in the middle of training. Middle he of the would, training. He would walk, middle of training. Middle of training. He'd kick balls over the fence. He'd go home. <laughs> but but no no no. You can't give me the butt. Give me more stories about no, Thierry no, Henry. No no no. I, I mean I'll get plenty of those stories o o over time. But the the, the, the point is is that. <laughs> that that had an effect on the locker room all the time, right? And the locker room was based on the mood of Thierry. We would come in at halftime of games, be up 2-0. Thierry would come in super pissed off in a game, halftime, ready to just explode on everyone, saying this is not how we should be playing. And he'd had a standard that he wanted it to be played. But we'd all come in and be like, dude, it's 2-0 or 3-0. Like, what's going on <laughs> Chill here? Out. Chill like, out. Yeah. Like, save this for another time. The mood is good. Like, let us live in this moment. And, and he just had a different way of looking at the game all the time, that there was a, a constant stress. And I had heard the same thing about – David Villa and NYCFC is that not even so much about their role and whether they're playing well or not, because they like David Villa was a world-class player. Thierry Henry is a world-class player. It was more of their mood and the ability of what their mood could do to the locker room. Right? So take Ronaldo, whether he plays or not out of it, of course he's going to be pissed off and I want to play or doesn't want to be a sub or whatever. Like his ego's rolling into all those things, but his mood and his presence being that he is Cristiano Ronaldo in the locker room has the ability to tear a team down. Like we'd be nervous in the locker room, whether it's at halftime of a game or, yeah, or at right, the training right. grounds when this type of thing was happening. When Thierry was happy, everyone was happy because this is our leader. This is the guy that we all look to, the guy who's played in champions, the guy that's won everything. You look to him. And when they're down, whether it was for personal reasons or pissed off about a performance of the team or all those things, you would just sit quietly in your locker. And I would consider myself a friend of Thierry, but I was still terrified every time it happened. Um, no, and I heard the same of David yeah. Villa, uh, of like when he would come in in a bad mood one day, the whole locker room would just sort of, and the training sessions and everything around that would be affected by this person because of just the clout they had, the, the, the quality that they had, the respect that they had, the voice that they had, so, the, so, just the career that they okay. had, all that. Yeah. And you have to respect that obviously. And they, they're demanding that respect and they're demanding that, that level and expectation. But do you feel like even though there's a positive spin on that, right? Because it's probably going to raise the level of, of something or at least your attention and your focus or because you're scared to death of what this person's going to do to you or what they're going to say or how they're going to eyeball you or whatever it is, whatever phase you are in your career, depending on your age. Yep. Do, you, do, you, do you think that was what's be what was best for the team? Like, and obviously in moments, it's, it's, it's going to be great. You want that leadership in that moment when the team's not playing well and somebody's going to step up and say something. But if you're a coach, let's just say you're a coach, you look at your team, you're like, okay, this guy helps me in these really tough moments 
and, and that's worth something. But on the other like the other 80% of the time when I don't need that, it's just the biggest pain in the ass of all time. And so so what's interesting is I went on Instagram and Fabrizio Romano, one of our uh, co- colleagues here at CBS, he put out a thing on on his Instagram talking about the situation and and what Eric Ten Hag said with regard to hey, n- nobody's above this. It happened once before in a game. It can't happen a second time. I've talked to him. We're, we're discussing everything. He's being suspended until we can figure this out. And I wrote, that's a proper coach, right? He has a culture he wants mm-hmm. to set. He wants to do all that. And and the CR7 fanboys are absolutely hammering me on this post. It's unbelievable. Delete this. You don't know what the hell you're talking about. He's been lied to. Eric Ten Hag told him one thing, doesn't even use him. And I'm like, what is even happening? I got sucked into the CR7 fan no. vortex. Look, Look, Jimmy. Which is a fun that, place to be, by the way. If if that if that happened in peak Ronaldo, let's light let's light the internet on fire. Sure. But the reality is, is it is he's, not he's, peak Ronaldo. No, he's Michael and Jordan, it, therefore, the Washington Wizards. That's where he yeah, is. He's that's where he is in not peak Ronaldo. Is he still world class? <laughs> yes. Can he still do things that no very few in the world can do? Yes, of course. I'm not denying any of that. But the reality is, is a situation like this is a lot easier for Ten Hag because of the quality of players. It's not Ronaldo plus ten others. They've got world-class talent at Manchester United that they haven't been able to extract even remotely enough. And that's not Ronaldo's fault. That was before he was even there that they had these types of issues. But the 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 the, the game is bigger than him, and you're setting a precedent moving forward. It's a, it's, and, and believe me, if Ronaldo was in his peak form and at Manchester United, this would be a completely different conversation we'd be happy, no, having. No, of course. But, of course. But because there is there is some some exceptions to rules for your big stars. And Ronaldo probably had them for a lot of his 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 career. But this is a different situation of where he's at in his career and where the team needs to go. The situation of Manchester United over the last seven, eight years, the new manager coming in, new players coming in, needing to set a new culture and a precedent for the future. And I think it's not ideal. And whether he's lying or not, it's really hard for a Ten Hag to get the respect that he's gotten um, with communication and then assume that he's playing games with Cristiano Ronaldo. That's insane. Yeah, right. Like Imagine no, being Ten Hag, yeah. knowing you've got to have that hard conversation with one of the best players to ever play the game. Like, of course, you're not going to be like, oh, I don't want to avoid it. You need to be mature. Yeah, about you got to be and, straightforward. And, 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 yeah, 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 yeah. So here's here's some stats that I think are interesting to read out because there's a lot of comments right now saying Cristiano Ronaldo to MLS, and and we can try to decide which market we want him to go to. I'm mm-hmm. all for him going to the Columbus Crew. I think that would be. Uh, <laughs> see, I agree. See, he Ronaldo would love going to Columbus. I would, he would love Germantown. Okay, so so this is what's happening when when when. Eric Ten Hag doesn't start Cristiano in the Premier League. Uh, they have – these are the stats that improve. Their distance covered is not a big surprise. They've scored more goals. Their expected goals are better. Their pressures, their tackles, their goals conceded, their points. Everything – all that is much improved when Ronaldo doesn't start to the point where they have not won a game in the Premier League or even scored a goal, Heath, when Cristiano Ronaldo has started in the Premier League this season. That's wild to me. So, so he clearly, the team is, I mean, the stats bear it out, but it's probably to the eye test as well. You can see that they just have to carry a lot and do a lot more when he's out on the field. And he's gotten plenty of chances to make an impact given his role. Maybe he doesn't like the role under Eric Ten Hag, and fair enough, that's a different conversation. But, but when he's out there, it just hasn't turned into anything that's led itself to success. And now the fact that they're maybe even considering uh, releasing him on a free transfer is, is not surprising. I guess it is because of, who he is and what he's done in the game, but also not surprising given where the situation has gotten to. And we know that he's asked out before his whole thing with Juventus, you know, he's like, I'm, I want out, mm-hmm. you know, it's interesting. Yeah. So he has, he, he has a behavior, uh, a history of behavior that we could, or it might be replicated here. It might, it seems like that's what's happening. Where do you think he would, let's say legitimately, where do you think he could end up in MLS? Assuming I'm, I'm saying right now, I don't think he'd go to a, either New York club. I would say Miami would be a destination. Mm-hmm. And potentially the LA Galaxy. That's it. I I I think that it's... even L, even LAFC could have a crack at him. I don't think he goes there. I think the Galaxy would really come in hard because that's been their I think, kind of model for a long time. Yeah, Galaxy could come in hard. Miami, you know, those are the only two for me. Like legitimately. You know, uh, now, would I, I love and, to see and, him at FC Dallas playing in Frisco? I'd fucking love that. That would be amazing. Yeah, but uh, I mean, yeah. look, the reality of 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 like. I don't see him. I don't see him wanting to go to NYCFC. Maybe there's something he's going to miss the window of any sort of like own stadium type of thing. Um, 
I could see that being like if if NYC was a different world. Uh, I guess they are. City well, if they had their own stadium, then maybe NYC. But, but it's still it's still a CFG uh, move that that I think could be problematic uh, for for uh, uh, a Man United legend to go to a, a City Football Group. But uh, New York Ripples, I think they're past the model in that era of of spending like that um, and are and are doing it differently, much closer to to their European model of player development. Uh, yeah, and LAFC, I think they 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 took a flyer on Chiellini and they took a flyer on Gareth Bale, both who have played bit part roles for the team. I agree. They played supportive roles. Yeah. They played yeah. complementary roles, and they set that standard. I don't think they're going to move away from that because of just when you roll the dice with a big star now, and we're seeing this, you are rolling the dice. And yeah. the economics, the business side of that, like LAFC might sell more jerseys. I don't know how much money you actually make from a jersey, right? If the cost of a jersey comes from Adidas and whatever, like the club themselves, I I, I don't think that that's like a huge, huge money yeah, maker, right. even though that's a, always, it's yeah. always a big, that's always a big thing. But like I was reading somewhere that it's like pennies on the dollar they make on, on jersey sales. Um, So, and, and it's a sold out club with season tickets um backed up. And so LA Galaxy seems to be what I would think the, the, the right one. Now, look, if you went and offered up Cristiano Ronaldo to every club, would they start scrambling to be like, well, you know, maybe I know we said we wouldn't do it, but like <laughs> no one ever asked us either. We didn't All have the opportunity. Sudden, and so, yeah, he, maybe he really wants to go play for another Real and goes to Real Salt yeah. Lake, baby. Let's get yeah, after it. it all, exactly. It's all coming together now. They got a, they finally got a Real Madrid player. I mean, what does Real everybody Salt else Lake. think realistically <laughs> where, you know, in the. <laughs>